What in the world could you possibly do with a tiny amplifier? Maybe power tiny speakers? Let's find out. Two of my top five videos include tiny amplifiers. You guys seem to like them. So let's pick out another one. Tar Amps has a TL500 and TL1500. We decided to pick out the smallest one today. The TL500 on Amazon goes for $32. Check link in the video description to find out what it's selling for now. Thanks to the Prime One Day, we got the amplifier in, yes, one day. And here's what it's included. You get the box, you get the high level adapter, and you get the amplifier. Yep, that's all you get. And I say it's small, it'll literally fit in my jean front pocket. Here it is. Let's zoom it up though for the camera so you can take a closer look. TL500 Class D Amplifier 2 Channels. Also hides under my hand. Here it is. Tiny, tiny amplifier. Literally the only thing that makes it big is the mounting points. Having all the connections on one end of the amplifier is always nice. Makes it very easy to connect up. Speaking of connecting, here you can see on the left we have the high level input. This thing does not have RCAs. So you have to hook it into your speaker level outputs from your radio. And here is the plug and the four wires that come out, positive, negative for left and right. We also have the 12 volt connection for the battery. And we also have the speaker outputs. These will accept around 16 gauge wire. I'll show here. These hold the bare wires nicely. You also need a size one Phillips screwdriver for the top. Uh, for tightening down the terminals. We will open up the amplifier later in the video so we can find out what makes it tick, so stick around for that. As far as specifications go, 90 watts RMS, two times 45 at two ohms, no ratings at four ohms, unfortunately. Also 80 hertz to 40 kilohertz. It is not a full range amplifier because it doesn't go down to 20. Dimensions, 4.5 by 3.5 by 1.1 inches. Millimeter equivalents are included here as well. I didn't mention earlier, but the amp does not have a separate turn on. It uses the signal sensing of the speaker level inputs to know when the amp needs to come on based on a signal. Here on the amp dyno, we're going to look at the power output in watts on the left, the ohm load in the middle, the voltage of the dyno on the right. We also have the remote clamp indicator so that we can calculate efficiency. That'll be shown in the video as well. The TL500 is a stereo only amplifier. We're going to try four ohms first. It's rated, we don't know, because it's not really rated at four ohms. Certified test at one kilohertz, we get 22 and 21 watts at 14.42. Uncertified test takes us up to clipping. We're gonna expect pretty much the same, and we get exactly the same, 22 watts and 21 watts. What about dynamic? Surprise me, or not. 22 watts and 21 watts. That's well shy of that 45 by two, but that's not until we get to two ohms. As far as efficiency goes, we measured 76% at four ohms. I thought it'd be a little better than that. But anyway, let's move on to two ohms, rated 45 watts by two at 14.4. Run that beautiful bean footage. Here we go. Oh, a little bit shy. 36 watts by two, right at 14.4. So we're about 10 watts shy. 10 watts when we're only talking 45, it's kind of a big difference. 39 and 37 up to clipping. So again, we're not even quite at 40 yet. What about dynamically? Can we get to 40? Uh, hinting with it? Nope. 39 and 37. Then we measured the efficiency as well. We got 76% again. That made me think, this amplifier will handle up to 16 volts of input. Let's crank it up to 16 volts, what do you say? right at 16. Let's run this certified test at two ohms again. Can we get that 45 watts? Right at it. Oh, 44 and 43. What about dynamically send that one kilohertz burst tone into the amp? And yes, we do get the 45 watts, 48 and 45. So you need any more input to be able to get that full power. Here is the thermals of the amp, which it didn't get extremely hot, which I was kind of impressed. As for the results, we just showed you pretty much all the tests. One thing to note is the efficiency at two ohms with 16 volt input was 90%. Very good right there at the rated power. Now, before we hook it up to the tiny speakers, let's hook it up to the ELAC, see how it sounds with the full range bookshelf speakers.
Sounded good overall, but the bass was lacking a little bit. So let's try these 1.5 inch speakers I found on Amazon. Link in the video description below. They're some of the smallest subs I've seen, but there is a guy in Argentina that makes these really cool custom mini subwoofers. I've not been able to get up with him, unfortunately, because I wanted to send me a couple so I could show you guys. So uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll try that in the future and try those out. But for today, we're going to try these with a little bit less of a throw than his, but they still look pretty cool. So here we go. We got the tar amps hooked up to the mini subwoofers. Let's find out. Do they bump? All right, you got to admit it, that was pretty cool. Those micro subwoofers are pretty sweet. Now let's find out what's inside this tiny amplifier. It's the easiest amplifier I have yet to get into. There's one little clip here on one side, and it opens right up. The acrylic cover comes off. You can see the internals. I have a dime here on one of the caps, so you can get an idea of how tiny this is. We're using the macro mode on my camera here, so it doesn't look that small, but trust me, you cannot read anything on this circuit board without magnifying glass. We have a 7.5 amp fuse. We have four 25 volt, 470 microfarad caps. Then we have two of these Texas Instruments TPA 3118 amplifier chips, class D amplifier chips. And according to Texas Instruments, 30 watt stereo or 60 watts mono. Now that 60 watts mono is at 24 volts. We're only providing at 12 volts. So we're getting about half that, which is literally about what we're getting. Now let's find out the pros and cons of this micro amp. First off, you need something small. Here you go. It's tiny. It's easy to mount or hide. It's available online. Check the link in the video description if you want to pick up one. Simple connections all on one side. The TPA3118 amplifier chip sounds good. And it powered those 1.5 inch subs like a boss. What about things that could be better? High level inputs only, no RCA inputs. It does not meet rated power at 14.4 volts. We needed to 16 to get rated power. It's the same power as many head units. And what is the intended purpose of this amp? I don't know, it makes me think about it. Most head units provide this much power. Oh well, there you have my video review of the Tar Amps TL500 chip amplifier. So tiny it'll fit in the palm of your hand. It'll power 1.5 inch subwoofers like a boss. Check links in the video description. Thank you as always for watching. Make sure you subscribe and like my video. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Now I just know there's going to be somebody comment. What about 12 volt test? We only have 12 volts. Well, guess what? Here's your 12 volt test. Make sure you watch to the end. Certified test, one kilohertz. What do we get right at 12 volts? We get about 15 watts per channel. That's what we get at four ohms. What about two ohms? Can we get 25 watts per channel? Maybe a little more? Ah, right at it. About 26 watts per channel at 2 ohms. Big D, I'm out.